boom, let us begin. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the Omniverse Comics Podcast. Uh, I'm Eric Anthony. Where's the... It's... Up, down? <laughs> so we're there. No, we're over there. Yeah, right oh, this there. This is weird. Right, one of these sides. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like someone on TikTok now. <laughs> Dave, how's it going, buddy? Yeah, not bad, man. Not bad at all. Well, you know, a little bit of the not, not so goods, but um, trying to catch up on... On some reading, basically. Yeah, what have you been reading lately? Um, I'm trying to catch up on on um, Stormwatch. A little bit inspired, obviously, by the James Gunn announcement that they're going to make an Authority film. It's been so long since I read The Authority. I just finished The Authority for Did the you? first time. What, the, yeah. the right up to the end of the Mark Miller run? I read The Omnibus, yeah. Every oh, that's what's in the, Yeah, I've got it as um, The Two Absolutes. So it starts mm-hmm. off with the Warren Ellis issues, and then it... I think volume two is essential with Mark Miller and yeah. uh, Frank quietly, Frank quietly. Very, too. very in, like what an omnibus, first of all, uh-huh. because it's full of these really, really big zany sci-fi ideas. Yeah. And then um, it's so t- two totally different textures. Yeah. Literally the artwork on and, and uh, the direction they go in, like one is it takes itself kind of very seriously in, yes. in the first half and in the Mark Miller run uh, or second half there's a lot of parts in the story where you look you, you think of the things he does and you think you little son of a bitch like <laughs> what he he just it, it's just it's his it's the little I don't know when the last time you read it was but it's his craftiness of like that's always kind of been there and no one's done that that's pretty clever okay like he, I don't know if you remember, not to spoil. It's been about twenty years, had, I think. Okay, um, so spoilers if you haven't read it, but this isn't really a spoiler. It's just kind of maybe a teaser of why this would be interesting because it's. I think the Mark Miller run is a little bit more meta, textual. Yeah, or, I don't right. It, it makes a lot of self-referential. It it's aware of itself a little bit more uh-huh. than the first half, but not to say one is better than the other. Anyways. Uh, if people who've clicked on this thumbnail, we are gonna we're, we're talking about Mark Wade today, right? Today That's, we're going to talk about Mark Wade. We're going to talk about but Mark as is Wade. tradition. We don't talk about the thing we're talking about initially. Not right away. No. <laughs> so the, just a little a little teaser about the the authority it, to tie in with your um, Stormwatch. Um, the first, I think it's the first story arc. The villain is basically Jack Kirby. I don't remember. He's like this scientist who. Ended up creating all of these super soldiers. So it's kind of but the Avengers, another, right? It's yeah, but he's got like every other sort of makeshift version of a superhero locked up in in these cells, for lack of a better term, just ready to be thrown at them. So it's it's these little things of like, huh? Somebody kind of took Jack Kirby and made him the super vil- super scientist villain because he is the guy who essentially created all of the superheroes. And the, and the reason why I thought of it is because there's a reference in there where it says something like, in another universe, he would have just created superheroes for a comic book. Right. But in this one, in this one, he actually made super soldiers. Okay. A, a comic book, you know, like they do little things like that. And you're yeah. just like, oh, little, you little, it's, it's kind of, you, is this a hack? Is he a hack? Or is this really clever? <laughs> like, why didn't I? Think no of one that? knows that, this that day. Because sort of <laughs> that's the yeah. thing. Like, I think, but it was um, a lot of fun. Mark, Mark Miller's. I prefer Mark Miller's run. Um, yeah, you're right. Warren Ellis's issues take themselves a lot more seriously, and there's like a lot of global politics in there. And that's the thing. Like with Stormwatch, it's the same. There's some um, like pseudo. There's the book two that I'm currently on. Um, right ah, there it is. For those who can't see, that's Stormwatch Volume Two. Um, the hardcover. I don't know how easy it is to even get those two books, but it introduces characters like Apollo, Midnighter, Jenny Sparks, Jack Hawksmore. Introduces the Bleed. Was it called the Bleed? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so on and so forth. Um, but it's a lot more serious, a lot less tongue in cheek. And Mark Miller comes on and he just has fun with it. And mm. then, of course, he was hired to write the Ultimates, which was the the Avengers. In the Ultimate Universe, um, the restarting yeah, Avengers, and you go like, yeah, they went with the fun guy <laughs> for that. Yeah, it's it's so funny how they took the two people from the Authority. Yeah, so it was run, Brian then, Hitch. Yeah, yeah. 
wonder if Ashton have Warren Ellis and Frank Quietly done anything together. Good question. I don't know. Nothing comes to mind. No, I can't think of anything. I think of I think of Frank Quietly with Grant Morrison and with Mark Miller for some reason. Mm. Like those are his the deck of, the the artists yeah. or the writers that I think of him working with. That's true. But, well, they're all Scottish, aren't they? It, yeah, you're right. I'm also um, I'm not as deep into the Frank Quietly lore as some some people are. Some people really like yeah, that. I like his stuff a lot. People really love him. Mm. I, I enjoy his stuff too. I've read, um, oh, what's the image? Jupiter Circle. Oh, I've never read that. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Jupiter's there's a few Legacy Jupiter Circle. Yes, yes. Those, one. those. Yes, I, I've read that. It was fun. Um, kind of something you've seen before, but it's a whole little thing. But uh, yeah, some people are very well versed with Frank Quietly. So I always think of him with Mark Miller. Or, Grant Morrison. Grant Morrison. That's true. But today yeah. we are going to talk about Mark Wade. Mark Wade. Yes. Yes. So I, I think it's fun to kind of uh, do these pseudo top five, not pseudo, but like our top fives that are character uh, creator based. Yeah. Because you could, we could do this forever. We now. could, and we inevitably <laughs> will. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, let me ask you a question. Sorry. Yeah. When you think of of Mark Wade as a writer, mm-hmm. uh, where do you kind of put him in the pantheon of those sort of long term guys who have a prolific career that are, are re- kind of revered at this point, right? People really put Mark Wade up there as a writer in some circles. Where do you? How do you think of him? Um, it's funny. So normally, I, you know, I'm normally quite prepared for these before we start. I, yeah. I actually started putting this list together an hour ago. Oh, perfect. Thinking so like, oh, do you know what? It'll be fine. <laughs> and then I was going like, I've just realized I don't really like Mark Wade that much. Oh, wow. Well, That's interesting. It's, it's, I think the thing is, there are certain things that he's done that I really like. And then you get people that write for both Marvel and DC. And the argument I always have when people go like, oh, I hate DC. I hate DC. They suck. And you go like, yeah, but it's the same creators. <laughs> you're just slagging off people that you're a fan of. Why? Yeah. Um, but actually, it's funny where you do get some creators who are really, really strong with one company and not as strong at the other. And mm-hmm. I've tended not to like Mark Wade's DC stuff. Interesting. I was going to ask, which which universe do you prefer him writing for or think of him as a writer for? Because that's the other. Yeah. He's not one of those guys that hasn't spent a lot of time really being an architect in some ways mm-hmm. to how the the comic book universes are functioning i know it sounds really stupid to say like two grown men like comic universes but in in a storytelling way there's all these elements that have to be a through line through these books as, a, as publishing yeah and there's certain things that a writer like mark wade has put in place that you see them in, in the movie universe hmm. for instance right so where do you see him kind of having more of a influence or what do you associate him with i think he's got more influence with dc but i prefer his marvel interesting yeah are you, yeah, are you I, different I, same hmm i kind of feel like i kind of agree with you but i'm indifferent because there's things i i do enjoy of him on both from both companies uh-huh. but i also think of him because he loves superman so much and something like as we'll get into in this conversation, I'm sure Mark Wade's in, invented the the Speed Force with I don't know if it was Brian. He, he's Augustine. actually invented it. <laughs> he invented the Speed Force, but like on a, on a storytelling purpose. Yes, yeah. right. Like it comes from there. So in the Flash television show or in any of the Flashpoint uh, animated comic book miniseries, whatever it is, the reason Flash is such a, an integral part of the DC universe is. I'm not going to take away from Marv Wolfman and the crisis stuff, but some people learned how to, the trap door of that, right? He he said that he kind of left the trap door when he wrote it, and he goes, and if anyone was smart enough to figure it out, it was there for them to use. He had said that somewhere. Trap door? Yeah, and the way that Barry Allen died. Oh, I see. Okay. Some, something like that. Right. And I, I didn't really understand it myself, but I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's like a pay attention. Yeah. But, um... Something like the Speed Force in the DC universe is is integral to how it functions in storytelling. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. So you, I think you're right. He's he's left a, an indelible mark in DC, but he's got a good, good batting average at Marvel. I find. Yeah, he has. I think there's definitely some stronger stories. I think the thing that probably contextualize it better if we should we should we go into our list and see if we can... yeah let's get into it yeah. let's get into it yeah cool whose turn Who goes first <laughs> uh, what did we do last week I don't know what what did we do last <laughs> what did we do last time? no 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 what did we do the, the last episode I think it might be my turn to go first damn it okay mm-hmm. no no I think it's yours oh, okay. I'm you slightly relieved. This is the thing. To be honest with you, I have struggled to find five that I actually genuinely really like. That's okay. That's okay. I, I, um, before we begin or before you mention, I, I cheated again because I've I've read a lot of Mark Wade, but I don't remember specific stories. Like yeah. sometimes you can say like these six issues from this run. I kind of took a chunk in like this era uh-huh. or this sort of thing he did. A couple of times there's stories, but. Anyways, I, that's my cheat. Go ahead. Okay. You're going to hate me because I'm going to steal one that's blatantly one that you've chosen. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Well, I, I think we talked about this recently. Ah, my first choice. Oh, good. Is Kingdom Come, which after even after I, I said I don't really like his DC stuff. <laughs> I did like this, and I think the thing is, when I first read it, I wasn't a huge fan of it. So, Kingdom Come is set in it's an is it did it count as an Elseworld story originally? Yes, um, yes. So it's an alternate future where the the major heroes have basically retired. Um, Superman's working on a farm. Batman's old. Everyone's kind of old, and um, all the kids of the the like the offspring of the superhumans that we know. Um, are just running rampant and they're all dicks basically um mm-hmm. and then they encourage the heroes back but there's there's a bit of a weird twist with the the use of Shazam which I don't want a uh, uh, captain marvel I never right. I never call him Shazam <laughs> it annoys yeah. me when people call him Shazam he's not Shazam yeah. he's captain marvel I know what you mean um I hate that I've I've bought into it now but anyways i didn't think i had until literally that moment so that's disappointing i know right um i'm gonna go and flail myself uh <laughs> that's not a euphemism so um basically <laughs> I mean, one of the big things with kingdom come as a, a story and it's funny because like the more i think about it the less i realize i remember um is is the art because the art is by alex ross who is probably the most renowned painter painted artist in in comics um, sure. His stuff is photorealistic to a point where actually, I think from a time before we had film versions, people were going, I love having Alex Ross stuff because it's the closest we'll ever get to seeing them in films. And now you actually just get to see them in films. Um, although they really look the same as they actually do in the comics. But there's there was there was something about his, like if a person's never read comics before, mm. I would give them an Alex Ross book and say, tell me this, tell me you wouldn't read this. Like you wouldn't take this seriously as silly as it may look even in not to skip over kingdom come, but even in his work in marbles where you see the green goblin and the Gwen Stacy moments. Yeah. Retold. You realize like what a weird frightening thing it would be if people really did this yeah, and looked like this. Well, when he did, he did the um, Atlanteans attacking New York and you got like, this looks creepily real. <laughs> like, right? this is how weird it would be. Oh my God, there's massive yeah. crabs. Namor's got exactly, massive yeah. crabs, which is why Sue Storm had to stay away from him. <laughs> we all Continue with Kingdom Come. <laughs> um, Kingdom Come, it looks pretty. It's actually a really well-told story, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of people rate it as one of the, probably like the top five DC stories ever told. It's that popular. I, I don't yeah. necessarily rate it that highly, um, but it's one of those ones that people have come back to a lot because it's set, It's weirdly, it's set a groundwork despite being set in the future. So it gets referred to quite a lot. So it's, I think it's referred to quite heavily in the JSA series. Um, there was a sequel called The Kingdom as well. Don't read that, it was balls. Um, it was really bad. I heard it was. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard. I think I stopped even trying to get through it. Um, I will. Who was the artist on that one? There is. It's a series of one shots. 
Oh, so I don't think, yeah. I think Mark Wade writes some of it and then some issues are written by other people. And it's like, this oh, just feels okay. like a cash in. It was about a year I later. See. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have done some, some better stories from it. And also Superman has this very, I'm trying to find it. You can't really see on the cover here that, well, you sort of see it. For those watching yeah, on camera, it. he's got the, um, it's like a black and red symbol rather than the classic yellow and red symbol. Um, and that's become quite iconic as well. But it's quite yeah. A, Brandon a, Ralph is the basically the Kingdom Come Superman in the DC uh, television. Oh, universe. they did it. Yeah. So yeah, they like this like, again. Never seen like it. Uh, me neither. I haven't. But to what I was saying before, like he's things he's worked on, things he's collaborated on, have left this sort of indelible mark in DC where that Superman S. I know it's an Alex Ross design, yeah. but in that story. You know, yeah, th that's an iconic Superman, a, a one that people often say like one of the best Superman stories. Yeah, that's the thing because he's he's retired as well, isn't he? And they have to basically drag him out of retirement, so it's quite a big deal. And it's, you know, it's coming, but when it happens as well, it's kind of it's quite a cool moment. Um, and it's a self-contained four-issue yeah. series, although they're quite yeah. chunky four issues, aren't they? So they're double size, Four, forty-eight, they forty-eight page pages. Issues? Yeah, so I think so. Yeah, the equivalent of eight issues. Um, so it's a quite it's a hefty story, and essentially, like, if you never knew there were sequels, you'd be quite happy reading that from beginning to end. So, it's like as a recommendation for Mark Wade, plus you get Alex Ross. Give it a yeah, shot. It's no, Kingdom it's, Come. It's also available in Absolute Edition. Yeah, it's it's one of those books. Three of my heads. <laughs> it, it's definitely one of those books that you could have just as a, a coffee table book. Because it's very difficult to not flip the pages as you look through and be like, wow. Yeah. Just the artwork. It's phenomenal. I think the artwork think... on that is better than Marvel's, personally. Also, he yeah. drew a sex scene in there. <laughs> yeah, you've told me about this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see if you can find it. If we didn't hear the episode where we talked about that and reveal where it was, see if you can find it. Hmm. <laughs> um, and I, I think, to give credit where it's due, I think... Um, a lot of that story is plotted by Alex Ross as well, right? Like yeah. a lot of those things were his brainchild. So it is one of Mark Wade's greatest hits, but I think a lot of credit <laughs> is also due to, like you said, Sorry. how beautiful that artwork is. Yeah, for sure. Actually, you're saying about the greatest hits thing. There aren't going to be major surprises for me tonight. Just <laughs> there's no that's weird okay. left field shit this time. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. So we're going to, so I think we're, what we're going to have to do is just race to see which one we're going <laughs> to see. Yeah, from we'll each be other. fighting. Um, in the car park, I'm I'm a big Mark Wade fan. Um, from both companies, I've I think I've read a lot more of his stuff from Marvel action. Marvel, yeah, yeah. I think I think so. I have a lot of things collected from him. Like I haven't finished off uh, reading Fifty Two, which I know it's great, and I got to finish it. Um, his Flash run is very celebrated. I have you know the whole series there, so I have a lot of chunks of him from DC. Yeah, but. There's a lot of things from Marvel, like we'll get into today, okay. that are I would want omnibuses of that I haven't gotten my hands on yet. So I've talked about this one. I'm going to steal it from you for sure. <laughs> I've talked about this one plenty of times before, but it's it, it could be my favorite run of the character. I'm not going to continue on making you guess. It's Captain America. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. His Captain America is really, really solid. And... Um, it isn't, there isn't one particular story, so if you want to dig deeper into the Captain America run and you know a story that you particularly like, pick it apart. But the whole run with you know Ron Garney, Annie Kubert on the art, it was a really strange time, like we've mentioned before. It was that strange publishing period where Captain America disappeared from the regular Marvel Universe mm -hmm. where all the superheroes were, and the Avengers and the Fantastic Four, and basically the books that weren't sent selling as well as they should have been, yeah. were given to those hotshot creators that started Image Comics, right? When the Heroes Reborn. Yes. That's Heroes Reborn. So it's a, a good story being told that gets interrupted for a year for an experiment that doesn't work. <laughs> and then he's asked to be brought back on yeah. to continue the, the, the story with the character. And he figures out a way to stick the landing. Yeah. Like it, 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 you hear a lot about the editorial at that time not being easy for him to have certain... Like, there was an issue with the Red Skull that was heavily edited. Yeah, they 
didn't they rewrite the entire issue? Pretty much. Like, a lot of the stuff he was trying to tell, there was times where it's like, that's not what I wrote and you put my name on it, sort mm. of issues. With all that being said, it's been collected in various formats. I, I'm almost certain that it's going to come back in an omnibus. The last the last one wasn't a good printing. Like, the binding yeah, things were all very funky. Busted, basically. Yeah. But, like, because that's the thing. Like, it... So it's it's weird. He, when he picked it up, it was the it was after the Mark Greenwald issue. Yeah. And Mark Greenwald was on the series for what, 10, 12 years? I think. Yeah, he had like a Peter David. Yeah. Run. He basically stayed on. The beginning was brilliant, the middle was okay, the end was a bit shaky. Um part of it was because he was being given, let's face it, not great artists to work with. Um and maybe it was just and it was I think he was trying to jump into the nineties vibe and he should have just stuck doing what Mark Greenwald does best. I think you're right. Um, but by then, yeah, they kind of done this. Cap's going to die. Um, let's replace him. And they had all these other Captain America and stuff like that. So, like, is mm-hmm. he going to be the new Captain America? Is he going? And then basically, Cap dies. Screw it. It's not even a spoiler because not. It's, it's, by all means, pain yourself through that terrible run. But um, well, I'm going to ruin it for you. He dies. And so when Mark Way jumps on, Cap's dead. So he had to bring Cap back. He he had to mm-hmm. find a way to to bring back the Red Skull, which was when at a time when villains largely stayed dead or were dead at least for a considerable length of time. Villains were the ones that came back, you know. But the Red Skull, I think, was he was. I can't remember what storyline they had where they killed him off. Was it from three hundred? He was a shadow sure. on a wall, basically. I think. Huh. Oh no, was that the end of it? No, it's confusing. I don't want to spoil too much, but basically, yeah. When, okay. when they go into it, Mark Wade and Ron Garney jump on and it's so good. And it's like high octane. And he remember he, when he said, when he was writing it, he said like, I, I didn't, I, I found that it was moving so quickly. I didn't have time to write a lot of dialogue or write about what he was thinking. Cause it was just traveling. Yeah. And it's like, it really shows on the page. You know, the way that it was being fun. told was so different to what had come before. It was just like, we're just going, we're just going now. And they brought characters back and it was, it was, yeah, you're right. It was just a fun series broken up by Heroes Reborn. And then they went and people were complaining, like you got rid of Wade and Garney on cap for Rob Liefeld. Hello. Um, with his moobs. Um, yeah. And Mary moobs. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then they went, like, come on back in, come on back in. And then they basically had him back. And it was, yeah. And then, and then Andy Kubert jumped on after a few issues. Plus they had that Sentinel of Liberty 12 issue series that accompanied right. it, where it was set right, at various right, right. different points in time. Yeah. Which um, I think is is collected in the Omnibus, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. The, the Omnibus is a, is a really nice, uh, it's a really good one in the sense of what, how much it collects of a certain uh I feel it was a strong era mm-hmm. for that character, kind of one that encapsulates a mix of all of the weird stuff from the eighties and a little bit of the stuff that would come after with the, the espionage and being part of yes. shield or on the run and, and him being somewhat of a fugitive, all these different things that we know to be Captain America, but in a very, very fast pace, like you said, high octane, uh, the artwork is, it's uh it's got velocity to it, yeah, right? The whole way through, Just yeah. The whole way through, it's uh, it's one of my favorite. And I, it's weird because I got into Marvel after the movies were becoming a thing, uh huh. And I'm surprised at how much Captain America I've read now from different decades. You like have I've read, read a lot, a actually, haven't you, Cap? I, I have, and this one stands out to me. Like it's, it's got a soft spot. So um, I know it was probably on your list. I'm sorry if I stole it, but yep, I really utterly screwed me now. So don't take any more. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. I'll let you have all the Marvel ones. <laughs> oh, thank Christ. <laughs> okay. Well, you started with a you, DC. You say so... that. You say that, but I might be stealing one from you now. Go for I'm it. I'm gonna do it. Um, but I'm gonna need your help. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's an artist name you don't know. Well, uh, well, mm, probably. Um, no, it's actually because I'm not entirely sure which bits he wrote. Okay, okay. So, as mentioned earlier, I, lo- I love this series. It's been a long, long time since I've read it. But, oh mm-hmm. my God, I remember when like I would I would get into this whole thing of like, 
um, pretending I hated DC because I was a Marvel fan and people would pick on it and go like, yeah, 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 go for it. Pick on DC. I don't really care. I don't actually read much anyway. And I read 52 and I just absolutely fell in love with it. Yeah. It's so good. I don't know which parts you wrote. No, neither do I. I have no idea. I'm so sorry. The only thing I know is Greg Rucka was was Bat Batwoman was appearing in there. I think he was writing the Renee the, Montoya part. Yes, the question stuff. Question stuff. Yeah. Um I I can imagine Jeff Johns writing the Black Adam stuff. Yeah. Because he was pretty sure associated right. with the JSA. Mm -hmm. Uh Grant Morrison what did other... the Egg Foo stuff, I think. The which one? The Egg Foo stuff, the Thingy Island, what's it called? Ah, I don't All know. Right. Anything weird I, I, was Grant Morrison. <laughs> so then the Booster Gold was in it, right? So it could have been the Booster oh, Gold the and the... There was, what, what was that character that they <coughs> made? He was like the, the Il Nova. Uh, the what? Oh. It was, what was his name? I forget his with, name. Again, oh, I, haven't, I, don't know. I haven't finished the series. This guy. There's his bum. I can't see. I can't. <laughs> I can't see. No. <laughs> There's his bum. There's his bum. No, I no. can't see it the way you're Maybe I should it. turn it's him okay. around. Yeah, show his bum the other side. Oh, he's like a Superman, but with his face covered. Oh, right. It's not. I can't get past my mic. <laughs> I, may, I, I think maybe he did those parts. But again, the collective of that series, and I don't think there's a... From what I've read, I've read the first trade of it. They, were, they split it in two. Right. So the first 25 oh. issues. That's what I got. Yeah. The two, I got the um, four-part trade, I think, of yeah, I had a slightly different printing, but it was, yeah, it's it's so good, and the, the pacing was brilliant, and it's set over a year, and it's it's literally weekly. set. They were doing that weekly, yeah, and it was a good good a group of artists that were all making this book happen and and pulling through week after week. So I never ever hear anybody say something ill about Fifty Two. I don't think the there's anything not to love. It's yeah. it's so good. But it's it's funny because like it was so it was set after a cri uh, infinite crisis, which was a big world changing event. And then what they did mm. was the next month they did one year later, um, right? Where they said like you know years gone past since infinite crisis, and then fifty two was being released at the same time over the course of twelve months, fifty two issues, one a week. Um, maths, woo! I passed. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna cough and I can't mute my mic. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, yes, and it it explained what happened in the course of that year. Right. Um, and it it's literally yeah. It's like each week, each week. It's like this is what this is how this story moved forward, and it's just so brilliantly told because it's overlapping yeah. as well. There's like multiple characters, multiple chapters, but it's all interwoven perfectly. In theory, what a it series! Be one person writing it. it like, it's how did they organize it in that way? So and well what writers? Right, yeah. Jeff Johns, yeah. Mark Wade, Greg Rucka, Grant Morrison. Damn, DC and they did made it well work. at that point in time because that was they when were, they were yeah. up against um, Marvel doing Civil, Civil War. War. Yeah, as we both sip <laughs> in, in dead air, <laughs> like a speakeasy we moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> Every yeah, time we mention Infinite Crisis, we have to drink. <laughs> <laughs> or crisis on any crisis Earth. let me explain to you how that worked uh, yeah no 50 good call it wasn't on my list oh I'm happy i'm happy you listed it and i would be remiss for uh, anybody who is a mark wade fan and wants to hear i haven't read any i don't know if you have any of the cross gen stuff that he had done no, I, I think it's worth us picking up on a few after we go through our numbers because um there's a lot of stuff he's done that I haven't read that I really want to read. Yes. And actually, incidentally, anyone listening, um, if you want to chuck in in the comments uh, any suggestions of anything we've missed, um, yeah. we'll happily throw them in at the end. Uh, any recommendations, we'll take them. Yeah, and there's def there's going to be definite things that are big Mark Wade hits that I've missed. Mm -hmm. uh, I know people really love his ruse and stuff he worked on at CrossGen. If you want to hear about that stuff, not for you to change the channel, but again, comic shenanigans, Mark Wade's got a couple interviews there where he gets into detail about that stuff because special guest last week, Adam, has read all of that stuff from before. Uh -huh. And it's very niche, right? Like, I don't know what to recommend it. 
what I hear is very good. It smells very good, and also it looks like they're going to start reprinting them. Marvel are going to start reprinting cross gen stuff. That's very nice. That's very nice. Yeah, yeah. So we it was a good a group of creators that was there, right? It was highly praised stuff. Like yeah. uh, Scion's the one I want to get hold of, I think, which was their Jim Chung drawn series. Mm. Just looks incredible, but we'll we'll get to that another yes. time. <laughs> yes. Okay. Fifty-two. Fifty-two. Great, great. I gotta finish that. Yes. Uh, might have seriously, to take that you on have a vac- to finish. <laughs> yeah, I might have to take that on a vacation and just go through the whole the whole series. Yeah. Do myself the the favor. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. I'm gonna pick a a weird one that I don't. I hope this isn't on your list, but it isn't a Marvel or DC pick. Ooh. Who did publish it now? Shame on me for not knowing. But it isn't a superhero book either. It is Archie. It's published by Archie Comics. It is, yeah. right? Okay. I haven't read all of the stuff that he did there, but he did the first couple of issues with uh, Fiona Staples, right? From a saga. A saga, yes. Really? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. Don't quote me, but it was a pretty significant. Up. Yeah, it was a pretty significant team up. So I said, I got to read this, this Archie series, and it was very good. And I know that um, he went on to to continue writing a couple more series or or doing Archie series that were set in different eras, different decades. Oh, and got to tell some really interesting stories. But he updated it in a way that was even better than I think the Riverdale television show, but if you liked that, that show, the comic would you would enjoy it. So it it had the comedy, the levity that the Archie comic strip had, but it also was able to get into a little bit deeper of the connections and the relationships and, and how does he bounce from girl to girl like this and they right. get away with it. Like these one this this story had him having consequences did you look up who who drew it um i didn't look it up i just i just okay. looked up archie because it what it what it made me realize was i remember reading about this ages ago and going oh they've modernized him uh, archie yeah i didn't read it and it it, it that's so actually i would dismissive. recommend it <laughs> sorry yeah no that's okay that's okay i would i would recommend it to people who one are a fan of like old archie comics and if you are a fan of mark wade and his superhero stuff like this is actually a a, a book that I think it's kind of a dark horse book, quote unquote, in the sense that you wouldn't automatically associate it with a Mark Wade's greatest hits, no. but it's it's off the beaten path. I think it got and a lot of praise at the time, but it, yeah. was, it was quite yeah. underground almost. A little bit. It, and the spinoff series like Jughead that was written by, I think, Tom DeFalco. Oh. They had some pretty good, pretty good stuff going with Archie Comics and the people they had on it. It was, yeah, a pretty solid line. But it started, I think, definitely Mark Wade writing it. And I'm pretty sure Fiona Staples. No way. I should look it up before I, I say, like, I know what I'm talking about. But, uh, yeah, that's my pick. That's an interesting pick, man. Nice. Look at you all left field <laughs> instead of me this week. <laughs> <laughs> Someone had to do it, right? Somebody got to gotta do lo- it. You usually give me the lobs. So <laughs> and you're sat there going, the- what the fuck yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, right. I'm not going to dwell on this one. I'm going to breeze through it fairly quickly because we've mentioned okay. it twice, I think, recently. But I, I can't do a Mark Wade list without mentioning this because this is probably my second favorite Mark Wade thing. So this isn't in any kind of order. Okay. But Perfect. We were talking about this. Actually, funnily enough, we were talking about it not on, only on this show, but on Geekable recently. Uh, so, oh, oh, yes, 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 yeah. yes, 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 yes. So our interview... I on, haven't read this. I really want oh, to. it's so good. Um, the <laughs> So we recently did an interview with Nick from Geekable, and that's available. Shout out, Nick. All right, Nick. That's... Um, it's really nice. He's very he's such a sweet guy, isn't he? It's ridiculously yes, sweet. He's a really sweet guy. Um, but yeah, he, um, he had us on... on the Geekable podcast and we were chatting away about old school comics and you know new school comics and the the way the films interact with the comics and stuff now the kind of stuff we bitch about here um yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yes we also mentioned this which has come yeah. up before on the show it's um it's Kazar if you if you ever wondered how to pronounce this it's Kazar so it's it's <laughs> K A dash Z A R 
Did I ever put that on Kazar, a how do you pronounce this question thing? No. no. Yeah, I think you did. Did I? I think you did. That, yeah, it, think it was on the front cover. I think it was in X-Men number 10, the original Uncanny X-Men like number 10. Okay. It told you how to pronounce it in there. And it's Kazar. Oh, Otherwise, go. I would have gone right. Kazar probably for the rest of my life. Um, probably. Stupid fucking name. Anyway. Um, but <laughs> basically, he's Tarzan, isn't he? He's Marvel's Tarzan. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, but he's always been a bit of a throwaway character. It was a bit weird because, like, I think back in the seventies, like through the sixties and seventies, he just grunted. He couldn't really speak. Mm. He was very much that kind of me Tarzan, Eugene mm. kind of character. Okay, and okay. then one day, in someone's storyline, he basically went, "Yeah, I'm all right, mate. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm wearing a loincloth, you know. Yeah, just letting it breeze, breeze through, mate. You know, letting the air get to it. <laughs> you're in New York. <laughs> Put some trousers on. <laughs> no, <Nah>, mate." <laughs> No, deal with it. And he sits back and crosses his legs. Bollocks. 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 <laughs> Come for the comics. Stay, stay for the bollocks. Stay for the bollocks. So, yes, this in this story, this was during the period we were talking about, funnily enough, just now, when um, they killed off all the heroes and sent them off to another Earth in the Marvel Universe, um, which was Counter-Earth at the time. So the Avengers and everyone was dead. That's the Rob Liefeld era that we were talking about earlier. Right. And in that time, Marvel started to push some of its older and more obscure characters. And one of them was Kazar. Um, it's drawn by Andy Kubert and inks, the inks by Jesse Delperdang. And I have to mention that because when Jesse Delperdang started working with Andy Kubert, his art just like rocketed. It was so mm. much better. Um, but there's just some amazing pieces in this. Like it's just, it's all about, because I think like, when was it? I think it was about like 1989. They introduced, uh, during the Roger Stern run, I think they announced that Shanna, the she devil, who's his wife was pregnant. And then they never mm. really, there was nothing really about it. And this series picks up on the idea of him being a dad and struggling with being a dad, but while also being kind of a dude that lives in a jungle surrounded by dinosaurs. Like, how do you live mm. with that responsibility? It's a very relatable series. Um, it is good that it's, it's so good. Um, I want to try and find this cover that's in it that's just awesome. It's basically like there's a point where he just heads off to New York. Like he's being hunted initially by the guy who trained Craven, I think. Mm. Um, and then he heads to New York and he's fighting the rhino. And it's basically like it's a dude in a loincloth. Like it's he's got no chance. I cannot find the issue for the life of me. But there's one of the covers, but it's not the cover I wanted. Um, there you go. But it's pretty cool still. Um, but they pit him against people he's got no hope against and what why not um so because his brother's always been a, a villain in it but he was always a bit of what was he called the smuggler or oh, i'm totally forgetting what his name was it's a terrible name they just call him by his actual name which is passable um plunder um he teams up with a major villain like it makes no sense for him to team up with this villain but you will get a major major cosmic villain in it that you couldn't fail to recognize you might have even seen it on the cover so mm, right ooh. Yeah, very, uh, very interesting and, choice. And then they pit him against the high evolutionary. So, like, this guy is just so out of his depth. <laughs> yeah, and he's trying to figure weird. out how to be a dad. So it's it's an odd series. Um, one issue is there's an annual as well that's written by Brian K. Vaughan. Um, but he's quite embarrassed about it because it's, like, one of his earliest pieces mm. of writing um, in the mainstream. <laughs> um, I haven't read that in a long time. But, yeah, I read the rest a while ago. It's so good, man. It's so much fun. I really want them to collect this. They need to cover to cover. It, it it's very manageable to do. And yeah. I know a lot of people a lot of people there's like a cult following for this book yeah. because it's two pretty big name creators mm -hmm. that um had worked on X Men and had you know, their own sort of fandoms of people to follow them. And then this is what I think Andy Kubert had said he wanted to do. Oh really? When he, he Yeah, I think it was the option for them to team up and, and I think he said you want to do Kazar and they just went for it How random. and made it and made it work yeah it made, does found work. a way to make it work and it's yeah. like it's 14 issues there's like a, there's an annual and there's a minus one issue because they were doing those at the time um, and then Christopher Priest jumps on and then I jumped off I don't know why but he did a, about a four issue storyline or something and then that's it well, um, they should get omnibus it they should omnibus Kazar. it it's, it's yeah. like it'd be a thin one but it would be a good one Twenty issues. Um, well, you give give or take. Yeah, yeah, they can do it. They've done less. They did six. So yeah, was it yeah, six or honestly. eight? Devil Dinosaur was the thinnest one. Whatever. That wasn't. Yeah, yeah. they can do this one. 
people would get it. People would definitely want it. Yeah. Okay. I like it. I like your picks. Ooh, thank you. Not they're not they're not all the obvious ones. No. So far. I mean we have a couple like Kingdom Come, Captain America, sure, but you know, Archie and uh and this one was what, what was he called? What's his name? Azar. <laughs> Kazar. Kazar. Box. <laughs> okay. Um I'm going to go for maybe some low-hanging fruit here. It's <laughs> Don't say that after we're talking about bollocks. <laughs> That's why I said I'm it. I'm going to go for Kazar's low-hanging fruit. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've read this yet. I don't think you have. But I've read it a number of times. I really, really love it. It's uh, King, uh, not Kingdom Come. It's Birthright. Superman Birthright. No, I haven't read it yet. Uh, Lanil Yu... Is the artist twelve issue? I guess it's considered maxi series. I was going to say mini series. A lot of Men of Steel, not a lot. Sorry, there's portions of Men of Steel that if you read Birthright, you could see that they've taken ideas from there. The film had yes, had they adapted Birthright a little bit more faithfully, uh-huh. Man of Steel would have, I think, met a warmer uh, applause or audience critique. And critical of claim, but anyways, uh, it's a modernization of the Superman origin. Like you, it puts him in an era where there's technology, and he spends a few years. Like it, it acknowledges kind of like that new change of um, Superman and Lex Luthor knowing each other. The way Smallville had sort of presented it. it, it shows you a little bit of that part of their relationship, not in continuity with smallville but kind of an update to say you know what if you're into superman right now these are sort of the norms that people associate with the character which was a callback to i think the silver age Mm -hmm. anyways so he modernized it in a way that that would like what if superman existed in the 2000s and he showed up for the first time and what would it and we've talked about this before on, on the show but it's it's that Clark Kent being very aware of what people around him might be saying about Clark Kent when he has to take on that persona in Metropolis. Like, it's a very lonely existence and the threat that Superman could be perceived as and yet the, the feeling of hope, you can't help but see it come through. So it's a, it's a fun origin story. One, I think, out of the secret origins that Jeff Johns did, and the Man of Steel that John Byrne did, I think I might prefer Birthright. Oh, okay. Be- because it kind of takes the amalgamation of all Superman. Because I think Mark Wade was one of those guys who really loved Superman post or pre-crisis, like the Elliot oh, S. Magan yeah. era of, of Superman. He really liked that. In his mind, that was Superman. But he has to now adapt to what john byrne had sort of put in motion mm-hmm. for the next decade so it's a it's a nice little update for me i know i don't know how everyone else feels about it but i highly recommend it as a as a first time superman story it's um it's one they actually re-released not long ago it's towards the end of yeah. last year in, in deluxe and i picked that one up yeah i i'd really be interested to see what you think about it because i know you got a soft spot for superman Dude. even if the stories aren't great you just like you got a, a guilty pleasure of reading superman stories yeah so do i but I feel like this one is. When I read it, I'm like, "This is. This should be a movie. <laughs> this should be a movie." It, it, <laughs> yeah, just a cigar out. Tried, at the time. And they tried to do it, but it wasn't as good. Uh, the comics always better. Well, the comics yeah, are right. always better. And Lanil, you drawing Superman is kind of that's not usual. Yeah, it, and that and works. It, it it looked on it. The story's so good that you you. For me, the story was so good where I became a Lanil U fan because of it. Hmm. That was my first interaction with him. And I didn't like it. I'm like, I don't like this guy drawing Superman. This isn't Dan Jurgens. <laughs> <laughs> right? This is supposed thing. to look a certain way. I think he'd come off of Wolverine. Yeah. At that and point. It, it has yeah. Oh, it's a it's a good it's a good one. Ah, cool. One of my favorite Mark. Yeah, one of my favorite. Nice. Alright. Cool. Well, do you know what we're gonna do? Uh, we're going to take a little commercial break. Advertisement break. Um, Let's do it. We're just going to tell you about some of the things we've got coming up um, on the Omniverse. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so for UK listeners, followers, readers, whatever you are, um, the Omniverse are going to be coming to Comic Cons in the UK in 2023. Um, the next one we're going to be at is on Saturday, the 18th of May at Bristol. Um, so come along and have a have a chat with us there. I'm just going to put this on a poll. Um, ah, oh, look, there's still a label on it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What? Very nice. We got merch. Woo! There's still a label on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, nerd. it's that new. Um, if you want one of these, um, you can't have one. Not you, dude. <laughs> I just mean anyone oh. come to speak to us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be throwing them out. No, we're not. Um, but we'll be wearing these. So come come find us. Um, if you're not sure what to read next, that's what we're here for. <laughs> Very nice. Um, and after that, we'll be coming to London, Brighton, Southampton. Um, so we'll be updating everything on the socials as we go through. Um, letting you know what we're up to. And yeah, come along and have a chat. And also, when you come along, you'll be able to get access to some early access to some of the stuff that's going to be coming up on the website before it goes mm-hmm. live. And when is the date for the um, for the event in March? Um, the Bristol one is Saturday, the eighteenth of May. So it's a couple of months away yet, but um, it's coming up. So keep an eyeball peeled. Um, new to the website, we've just added started adding reviews. The first review page has gone up. Um, we're taking a slightly different approach to how reviews are done on comics websites. Um, generally tended to find they're not that useful a lot of the time on comic sites. They tend to either be single issues or if it is collected editions, it's only when it comes out and then you can never find the review again. So you're then reliant on Amazon reviews where people have gone, it turned up, it was good, my grandson liked it, five stars. <laughs> like, oh, thanks very much. That's really helpful um so we're taking a very different approach that that i haven't seen anyone do that seems more logical um so the first reviews have gone up they are all mine i'm not a complete egotist um there will be other reviews coming some other reviewers who you may be familiar with um are taking part and yeah they're going to be adding their reviews so you'll be able to to see what they think about some of our stuff all together you'll be able to compare like, awesome. our uh, our takes um so yeah, Valiant's the first one that's gone up. So take a look at the Valiant reviews. It's not everything Valiant's done, but it's a damn good start. Um, yeah, that's good. Also, recently we added the Crease Scroll War Two, which was a sequel to obviously Crease Scroll War. You know, maths again. Um, Book of the Month Club episodes we were talking about earlier, which was Silver Surfer Epic Collection Freedom. Yes. Um, yes. and Invincible Universe reading order. Mm, um, so awesome. it's the entire run of Invincible plus all the related Jeez. tie-in books plus all the guest appearances that Invincible wow. has made um, all in chronological order. And it lets you know what you don't have to read. It lets you know what we recommend you read. It's it's trying to keep it as simple a process for new readers as possible. So if you want to read Invincible, you want to read everything, it tells you everything. You want to read Invincible and you want to keep it simple, it keeps it simple for you. It's literally with that Such help. a good, what a great series. It's an awesome it. series. So, so good. good. Also, uh, on the site, you can, if you wish to, you can subscribe to the site. Um, you'll get regular updates. You also get access to additional informa- uh, um, exclusive content, uh, which is going to be building um, as we go forward. So, it's you know, we're still, still slightly our infancy, but... Um, Essentially, a lot of the stuff is going to come out. Building, from the, it's building, man. It's it's. If you build it, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this it, is true. Come. Well, I mean, the the Marvel Comics guide was pretty hefty, and all that stuff's going to come over. So, plus, it's going to have all the image stuff and Dark Horse stuff, DC, and everything else we're going to cover. So that means yeah. tons of extra stuff. So, getting now, getting on the ground. Um, yeah, come yeah. The ground. So, and the website is omniversecomics.guide. So. Come and have a little gander, and you'll get plenty of stuff to have a have a nose at. And if there's something you like, um, or you that you want to see, just let us know, and we'll ignore you and we'll do our own thing. No, we won't. Let us know because we literally the feedback is really useful. Nice. Um, on my end, we're going to be at uh, Comic Con Toronto Comic Con March 18th. Woo! Is it 18th? God, that's not far, is it? No, not far. Um, wow. That the March 18th weekend. Uh, I think, Dave, if I'm not mistaken, it's the same weekend that you guys have an appearance somewhere. Oh, is it? Not me. 
I think it's March. Oh, I don't know if we're doing... I don't know if... I had a feeling we were doing something in March. I will update, but we'll update both. Give me all the details and we'll put it on the <laughs> thing. But, yeah. I think it's the UK, the UK CGF. Is that the event? Uh, we're going to UK CGF. Oh, it's Saturday the 18th of March. March 18th. My, my screw up, sorry. No, I put down that's okay. May. We have a producer of our show who lets us Thankfully, know. Thankfully. To get it otherwise right. Otherwise, I get everything wrong. <laughs> it's okay. We won't be at the event at the right date. Nah, turn up in May. <laughs> we might see you. Thank we you, Misha. Won't. 18th of uh, March. 18th of March, yeah. Big comic events going on in the Omniverse, literally. Your, your oh, side, no my March. side. No March. Yes, 18th of March. <laughs> <laughs> professionals dude <laughs> that's right all right back to schedule regular schedule programming what number are we on uh seven where are, oh i thought we're on one of mine is it your turn yeah apparently i'm gonna do the thing dude yes i'm gonna take one that i know we'd probably fight over with the book in our teeth like dogs i'm gonna grab Keep it talking. see which one I'm going to see which one you're picking. Mm -hmm. All right, right, go for it. Oh, it was in my pile, but I have backups. Oh, thank Christ. Yeah, (laughs) go for it. Because that that is necessary. This is the greatest, I think, the best stuff Mark Quaid's done for me. It's excellent. Yeah, and this is book two. So there's there's two of these. Um, They're normally reprinting them. So if you can't get hold of it at the minute, hang in. There are other ways you can read it. You can read it in digital. You can get it on Marvel Unlimited. Um, but it's Daredevil. Um, it's with Chris Samney and a bunch of other artists too. So I'm trying to remember who the artists Paolo, were in the Paolo, Paolo Rivera. Rivera, Rivera. Marcos Martin. Yes. Marcos Martin. Oh, there's some I think great artists on it's that run. So good. And it's largely self-contained. So it was after yeah. the um, <laughs> horrendous um, Shadowland event. Um, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Which they decided to make a big Daredevil crossover. It shouldn't have been a crossover. And then I think they everyone regretted it. And then they went, okay, we've done that. <laughs> Horrible dark moment in time. Let's get him back to his roots. To the point where they even brought him back to his roots from like the 70s when he was in San Francisco for a bit. So mm. some of it's in, in New York in Hell Ki- Hell's Kitchen. Some of it's the other, other side of the uh, the Americanness, um, mm-hmm. but they're just great stories. So they've got like a love interest character. Foggy's got his own issues going on. It's like uh, the villains are updated as well a bit, but not to a point where it's like let's make everything dark. Um, right. It's just really well. That's the difference of it, right? Is that it's it's such a unique take on Daredevil. It stands out on all, all on its own. There's no sort of like Brian Michael Bendis was clearly building off of Frank Miller sort of yes. thing of Daredevil, yes, and, and so, so did Kevin Smith, and and so did Ed Brubaker, so did everyone, and they just basically. everyone, right? But like you said, Mark Wade brings them back to a little bit more of before mm. that happens. Like what what would happen if he was just a swashbuckling sort of crime fighter adventurer? Was that Steve Englehart? And, I think it might have been Steve Englehart that was writing it. The stuff that he's, it, a lot of it's based on. In San Francisco, San maybe. San Francisco, maybe. I think, or is it Steve yeah. Gerber? It might be Steve Gerber. I'm not sure. Gerber, Gerber. I, I would be, yeah, I it wouldn't. I would, I'm not really I'd be, big on uh, the this direct, stuff. I, w- I don't know it at all. But this is, if you like Daredevil, like even if it's the Frank Miller Daredevil, that you, if you just like Daredevil or like good storytelling, this stuff is so much fun. And the artwork is, like you said, remarkable yeah because they're great storytellers yeah and he lets them tell stories the way they're meant to yes absolutely great it's it's cool stuff it's just it's just very very entertaining stuff they delve a little bit into bits of his past that no one's picked up on before not really um Mm -hmm. but yeah i haven't read it in a while but i love likewise but it was ingrained i think it was one of those things as well it was during the period of time when i was getting a little bit fed up of marvel being so heavily influenced by the films um but Daredevil was the shining light from that period, by far. It really was. It was so good, and and yeah, it was one of those books that you were just reading it, just going like this. It's a bit weird at first because it had been so dark for so long, and all of a sudden he's got a smile on his face, and then you realise yeah. that I'm reading Daredevil with a smile on my face. This is weird. Yeah. This is a weird experience. 
I've heard nothing but good things about the runs, the comic book runs that follow this era. The Charles Sewell yeah. and Chip Zdarsky. Yeah. I haven't read them. Neither have I. This left me. This left me so happy. Like I was. It basically. I was so satisfied. The era. With it. It, yeah, it's it's such a wonderful run. I don't think you need more after that. Uh, I, I haven't read the other stuff to say. I know people no, really do I. like it, so. but uh, I have read this. Highly rec- highest recommendation. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Five stars, man. Good pick. Yeah, definitely. It'll be on the review pages. Spoilers. Five stars. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a classic comic book run. Hundred percent. Good pick. I'm happy you mentioned it. Thank you. Because then I could pick stuff like Archie. <laughs> um, when you think when you think of when you think of Mark Wade, how would you compare him to like a uh, Summer's Day? If, <laughs> no, to like if, if an actor of the same sort of like when you look at Mark Wade as a writer amidst the comic book or if community, I, or like a director or a director, yeah. Like who would you who would you sort of who's comparable to like when you see one, you know that there's a certain level of expectation. I don't know. I pick. I had one. I I picked Matt Damon. Okay, Mark Wade is the Matt, Matt Damon of of comics. How does what well, because. <laughs> it's just that it's it's just that he's well known. Yeah. Right? Everyone everyone knows or has read or have seen something from them. There's a lot to like. And for some it's like not for me, but they can pull off pretty much any sort of character, if it's a dark street level character, something cosmic. Not that Matt Damon does cosmic movies, but whether he's an action hero, a comedic role, a, dra- uh, a dramedy, a Whatever it is, they kind of wear a few different hats without being. Uh, what's the word like? What, typecast pigeonhole. What's yeah, to yeah, yeah. Put into a box. Yeah, you you kind of you kind of know that there's going to be a certain. You, there's a good chance it could be good. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. I got um. There's this book called uh, Script Comic Writers on Script Writing. I think it's called, and they pick ten or twelve writers, and he was one of them. And that was like late nineties, because I think, or, or early two thousands, because by that point he'd really made a name for himself. And it's funny because I, I, I think they, I put him in the same bracket as Jeff Loeb in an odd way, because Jeff Loeb mm-hmm. and Mark Wade at one point seemed to be the sign of a at that time, the sign of a good comic. Yeah, because they were on X Men, right? They were they on X Men. Jeff, both doing Age of Apocalypse. Yeah, and they would jump onto the two through the two companies and knew the characters very well. Bearing in mind, Jeff Loeb did um, Long Halloween and Dark Victory around right. this time, so yeah. before the days when people were a bit more derog- derogatory about um, Jeff Loeb. Not me. <laughs> um, yes, so I kind of I think if I compare anything, I think like when I think of other creators that are similar. I think about Jeff Lowe yeah. when Jeff Lowe was at his height, but I don't think like Mark Wade has probably only made one comic that's had a lot of flack that I can think of. Um, otherwise Which one? a strange fruit. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. I haven't read it. No, I okay. haven't either. I think it was him and JG Jones, if I'm not mistaken, but it was cause it was because it was the, cause of the subject matter. They felt like it okay. shouldn't be written by a white middle-aged guy um, right i don't know if it was like taken out of that context i don't know if it was kind of good or not Probably. you know if right right did, right didn't know about that but yeah that's the only time I, I can think of where he's had a lot of flack generally he's yeah. the mark of quality that ah. yeah <laughs> ah, good i like it pun away <laughs> you intend that pun oh intend that pun. <laughs> <laughs> okay um let me think. I don't have a particular order. I'm trying to think of ones that I like, but also I'd be happy to recommend without. I recommended this to you. You didn't like it. I'm going to go with Do it. it. You're wrong. But I stand by it. Black Widow. And I and I think the differences in opinion that we have on it, I don't think are a testament to the quality of the book itself, but also the history that you have with the character that I don't have. I've never yeah. read a, a Black Widow series to compare or contrast. So I bought this off of the strength of Mark Wade and Chris Somney being cast for it to, to basically direct and write this what could have been a movie 
It was very, very fast paced. Yes. It was very similar in, in the way you described the Captain America. Uh-huh. There's, so I've mentioned it before, certain scenes where you really follow the action mm-hmm. and there's value in paying attention to what's happened in those panels as opposed to me sometimes I read and I just know that people are talking to each other and I'm not looking at the picture yeah. in detail. But in this case, there's a lot of kind of like, um, it, I think it's a Chris Somney thing. The writer steps back and says, go but, ahead. Yeah, he does. You gotta he does do. I mean, he's a very strong visual s- storyteller. I don't know if you've read Jonna the, un, and the Unpossible Monsters, which is kind of aimed at kids, but it's such a great series. There's, there's not a huge amount of dialogue in it. And it's just, and, and like, it really gets to show he's written it i think with his wife and it's mm. um i thought oh, she colors it i think they both write it and i think she colors it and he i, I don't know i'm not 100 percent on that but visually it's fantastic and it's just the way that he can tell a story without much dialogue at all and mark wade is good at stepping back he's done that with a number of creators like he does it a lot i think on daredevil as well and again chris somni was chris somni, one yeah. of those collaborators right right and so they they've established a bit of a, a team up thing that they do like yes. they know when to let each other do their job so a lot of this book for me of what i like is the same thing with firepower from uh, robert kirkman and chris somni yeah it's letting the artist tell his story yeah. and follow that those action scenes like they're really, really he's he's very good at chore- choreography yeah he's fantastic at it um yeah it's it's 12 issues you got a complete story of the character if you don't know anything about her you won't have to worry about continuity which i think if i did it probably would have annoyed me like the way you felt about it i was wrong though why is that because it was i thought it was after they killed the character and brought her back but someone said to me no it's not it was before and that was the problem i think with marvel i was just thinking about the continuity so much it's like, where does this fit? Has she been killed off and come back in this time? And it was just too... I thought This is why I struggle with post-Secret Wars Marvel. Everyone's dead and comes back so many times that it removes yeah. the weight. And I think like, if you don't go in worrying about that, it is a very well-told, fast-paced, exciting story that picks on little bits of her past as well. Like, obviously, her role as a Russian spy, her connection to the Winter Soldier, that yeah. kind of stuff. Um I was just very distracted by the mess that Marvel has become. I wonder. I wonder if if you gave it in a year or two, like a, a reread, yeah, just with fresh eyes, how you would uh, interact with it then? Possibly differently. I, I, I I've had that experience too, where it's either it's been something I liked or something I didn't really. I've tried to read the Authority before, and it just wasn't connecting with me, so I put oh. it down and I waited. And then this time, I went all the way through, and I'm like, "This is good shit." Uh huh. It's funny that. So, yeah, so I, I wonder, but yeah, I, I really, really like Black Widow. Highly recommend it. It's uh, not one of the most popular picks for Mark Wade, but uh, it's it's a little more recent. We're kind of yeah. guilty for not picking modern day Marvel stuff, right? <laughs> yes, so, very much. I so. snuck one in. We got Daredevil. We got That's Black true. Widow. Yeah, yeah, it's a good mix here, man. It's a good mix. That's right. <laughs> Uh, is this your number four? It would be if I knew where it was. So, all right. I this is my no. This is my last. This is number five. Okay. Um, okay. Now, bit of a tricky one because I, I mean I'm choosing this as like my number five. A bit of a push. Um, mm-hmm. As far as I remember, I liked it. Uh oh. <laughs> That's the thing. I don't hundred <laughs> percent. I have read it, but I read it twenty years ago. So okay. It's his Fantastic Four with Mike Waringo. It's not just Mike Waringo. I think it's like Howard Porter as well. Um, Carl Kessel. Fair amount of it. No. Yes, I think you're right. Yep. Carl. Is it? Is it Kessel? I think so. Oh, is it? Mark Buckingham. Ah, there we go. Yeah, there's quite a few creators in it, but um, I predominantly love the Mike Waringo issues. I love Waringo. It was one of my there picks. There you go. Sorry, dude. No, to, to I'm really happy you recommend it. it. sincerely recommend it. No, no. I'm happy you picked it because I haven't read it in a, in a while myself. Mm. But it was always one of those uh, Fantastic Four eras that the people who had read it would often say it's overlooked because it was, you know, the Hickman era had kind of 
the Hickman Fantastic Four and the Future yeah, Foundation have it really just overshadowed everything since. It overshadowed everything for a while, mm -hmm. right? And the Raringo and Wade stuff had left quite a an impression on people who were Fantastic Four fans. Yeah. And what was interesting about it from what Mark Wade had said is that he didn't have a lot of connection to the Fantastic Four. He didn't really know much of where to build off of. So he didn't go in with his usual fan hat like we kind of know him to be with DC where it's like this issue and that issue and this happened and this like he's he was an editor of the Legion of Superheroes. Hmm. Legion, right? Yes, that's, that's you're right, yeah. He he wrote and, that for a bit as well, didn't he? He wrote it too. Like some people really like the stuff he he wrote with uh, on that series. So he's really one of those like encyclopedic comic book nerds. Yeah, he is. Well, that's I think that was how he kind of started. I think he used to write fanzines back yeah, when they had and, fanzines, right? Yeah, and he wasn't well versed in the Fantastic Four, which made what he ended up doing on the book really fun to read really interesting. weirdly i think that came up before when we were talking about how some writers the, the way that they handle characters is different on different books and why and i think it was you actually that said i think he was a fan of those and i think it was mark wade that he was a big fan of this character and that character because like i've read i read his brave and the bold green I don't want to spoil anything in case that this is one of your choices. No, um, no, I haven't read that yet. The Green Lantern Flash. Yeah, I didn't. I have it. Like I it. haven't read it. I didn't like okay. Year One. JLA Year One. I like Year One. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I didn't get on it's with okay. it, and I think like it's weirdly when he doesn't have as much of a connection. I want to give JLA Year One another go. Actually, funny enough, but we'll, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, when he when he's has less of a connection, I think he's a better writer for it. I don't think you're wrong necessarily because like with Birthright, I like it so much because I know how much he also loves mm. Superman's his favorite character. And he's it's like, why haven't they ever let him have a go in the main series for a couple years? Like he knows the character. Yeah. He's going to do it justice. But then at the same time, I'm like, it's better you don't because they, it, they, they cherish it so much. Yeah. To the point that you might, you don't want to ruin it, that you might ruin it, you know? Yes. I mean, the thing is, there are some writers, I think, that people complain that they don't respect the history of the character enough. So it's a really difficult battle. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I think if you're so beholden to that history and so respectful of it, you won't turn out your best. Because, like, I mean, D Brian Bendis did that a bit on Daredevil. When he did his Mark, um, his Frank Miller tribute storyline um i can't remember what it was called that initial four part storyline uh, mm -hmm. about the little boy who's yeah that was a villain I, just, I didn't think that was very good um no and then when he lets go and he's doing what he wanted to do it was so good like it was so good better than it had any right to be it was brilliant um so yeah but then i don't think there's a hard and fast rule no no sometimes it's, it works right yeah. sometimes it's like that guy's going to be a custodian and do the character justice, have a couple fun stories, make a few references, and then, you know, thank you for taking care of it. And then sometimes they take the Peter David route and completely get their claws into it. And anything after, like, you think you can do better than that? Uh -huh. Like, try it. No one before or after is going to do better. Sort of, sort of take. That happens. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'd be interested to see him have an extended run on Superman just to see but I don't know how it would go. Maybe he just doesn't want to for that reason. Maybe, maybe. But in the case of your pick, Fantastic Four, he does some really cool stuff. Yeah. And uh, tells some rich, rich stories. Yeah. In there. It's, it's funny. I think it, it came off the end of, was it Chris Claremont had jumped on for a bit and that's not yeah. a great run. Um, and then Carlos, Carlos Pacheco, um, he was kind of steering it for a while with Jeff Loeb. And some people hate that run, but I really liked it. Um, but it's quite a safe period of time. When when did Mark Millar get on with Brian Hitch? Was that before that this? That was just before Hickman. So it was after this. Okay. Okay. How yeah. was that? Have you read that? Yeah. It's, okay. It's, <laughs> it's quite yeah. forgettable. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah. I don't really... You don't hear anyone talking about it. <laughs> Probably no. for a reason. It's like... 
I think he's tried to, he tries to do something really bombastic and reveal a big thing about Doctor Doom. It's like, mm. is this really necessary? Right, right. Got it. Yeah, but in the case of uh, Ruingo and Wade, perfect team. Yeah. Like, they, they're, they're great. From the the stuff they did on The Flash, I think this might... Oh, of because of the Because of the um, family dynamic, and, and you can really let Ruingo draw like the thing in the, the human yeah. torch but then the, there's family involved like it really lends itself to some interesting um renderings yeah it's yeah, it's, it's a, really nice it's a beautiful book and the thing is with the modern coloring as well really really brings it out um yeah it's beautiful stuff it's just it's just really really strong nice upbeat storytelling you had some great picks oh all geez. of your stuff has been like top-notch highest recommendation i think like i'm happy all the stuff that you covered you're like i don't got much to pick from i'm happy everything you picked oh thanks dude great. no it was good yeah fantastic you still got one more i got one more and i got thing with mark wade is i got a lot of uh backups because i I, <laughs> I do like a lot of his stuff <laughs> uh it would feel really really weird to not include the flash but don't, if you don't if that isn't what you want to choose don't choose it i know you don't i know you're not a fan of that it's stuff. Not, not even for that reason but like just choose what you want no i i agree i i do recommend i'll recommend things in the yeah the postscript of the episode but i'm gonna go with a justice league power of babel i keep forgetting that was by him yeah it's um it's a it's somewhat of a landmark series in the fact that it interrupts your main story t- storyline with Grant Morrison's oh, pretty classic run. I think I think I it's it in the middle of that. It. I could be wrong. Don't quote me. I got my original trade here of the uh, what issues is it? I used to have when. that. Yeah, this is the only copy. I only have this simply for Tower of Fable. It's issues. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It happens exactly. Was it thirty four ish? Um, when did he leave? Can't remember. Issues forty two to forty six right oh, now, and yeah, I think left by then. Yeah, he's left by then. Yeah, so I think I'm I remember there, there being a whole thing about like who can possibly follow Grant Morrison, but Mark Wade had written some issues sporadically interjecting yes. during that run, hadn't it? Yes, yes, he had. But um, this little storyline, it's had a lot of um, what's the word? It's had a lot of life after the fact in the sense that it's been somewhat adapted into a DC animated movie that I thought was really, it oh. was different. I don't know if you've ever seen Doom. No. It's it's basically a version of this story. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, but for non-spoiler, for if you haven't read this, this is basically Batman's fail-safe plans come to life. Isn't it the first time they've done this concept? Yeah, this is kind of where you you can see. Okay, Batman's up can be a little bit twisted. I think he's a little too much, but at the same time, it's like that's what makes him cool. Yeah, it's a really good Batman story, but also he's somewhat of the villain. Mm-hmm. Not because he wants to be, but just because. I mean, you got to read the book. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's it's a fun ride. It is. It it's, is. And if you liked, for instance, the the Justice League anime made a series or justice league unlimited this is gives you that feeling that that show gave you in a way like it was i think around the same somewhat of the same time i think so so it it kind of went it was a good little correlation of like the show and the comics sort of because it's howard porter art yeah if i'm not yeah, mistaken I think you're yeah right. it's still howard porter yeah because they did i think at that point in time they'd only released a couple of trades of the of the grant morrison run like one or two, uh, two or three I think. Um, and then they didn't, because they weren't releasing trades that frequently then. They released this no. because, like, it was, it just exploded. People are like, yeah. if you're not reading the Tower of Babel storyline, you need to read this story. And they just, boom, here it is. Here's the trade. Everyone jump on. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So I got that. No, it's a, it's a good one. Mm. Really, really high. Highest recommendation for a, a Justice League story. Because sometimes those, those super, super teams. It's like too much of a good thing. 
right? Yeah, I think when when every when everyone on the team is super powered, they've got to really come up with these zany concepts for them to have a reason to exist. Yeah, there's so many um, Justice League stories I've read where they go like, yeah, there's basically an alien attacking Earth who's essentially a god. And go like, didn't I read this fifteen times before? Right. But there yeah, are or, good or stories they, out there. Yeah, yeah, that, and this is one of them where yeah. the Justice League is grounded in ways that are. I don't remember it beat for beat, but the concept of the story, you're just like, genius. Good choice, right? man. That's a, that's a good, good choice. He's got, he's got some, he's got, a, he's got a good catalog of hits. He does. He, he's really good at the superhero stuff. Yeah. And every now and then he'll go write Archie. Yeah. <laughs> Funnily enough, before, um, before this, I was reading a series by him called Unknown, which is a mm. detective series. Like a, mm-hmm. is it super? Uh, I don't want to spoil it. I'm not, not necessarily supernatural. I don't know. There's like a weird twist to it, but it's like it's just some random series. I think he wrote for. Was it Boom? Can't remember. But like, there is some other. There's plenty of other stuff out there. He doesn't just do the superhero stuff. But my God, is he good at the superhero stuff? Yeah, yeah. When he's he when he nails it, he nails it. Yeah, definitely. Have you read Irredeemable? No. So I have them, and I was going to have them here. Um, I've got the two compendiums, Irredeemable and um, Incorruptible. Um, they're re-releasing them this year, I think, as well. Um, so if anyone missed them, get them. Um, but yeah, I, you can read them together. I'm, I'm going to read them together and do a reading order for it, um, cool. because they are related, aren't they? They're set in the same universe. Because there's also... What was it? There was another one? It Oh, there's like a comedy one or something, or... Mm. I can't remember the name of it. Insufferable. They're releasing okay. that. I haven't read this any year any well, of them in compendium format. Yeah, I haven't read any of those, but I a lot of people who are fans of Mark Wade uh, rave about that. They put that on their list. Um, there is a series. Brave in, is it Brave and the Bold? My glasses are off. But it was him and George Perez. For about 12 issues and then jerry ordway i think picked up in the later half of the series yeah but, um, i think you're right and it was issue it was a storyline i think was following supergirl but every issue was a little different of a team up yeah and i haven't finished the series and um i forget the gentleman's name or it's, it's a gentleman he sent us a list on our instagram yes, he page did. and he put down that that would be one of his favorite choices for an absolute oh. and it would be really nice it would be really nice we got to shout him out we, properly we but yeah 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 that that's it do you have anything on your uh, reserve list i got a few but if you have any anything... i mean the thing is they're technically not reserved they're, they're, they're literally stuff i haven't read that i want to but it, irredeemable okay. and incorruptible were one um ruse was another one that we mentioned earlier which is like a, i think it's if i'm not mistaken like a supernatural sherlock holmes type deal um mm-hmm. set in the cross-gen universe um but they're all essentially standalone books aren't they apart from that underlying an underlying thing that connects them as far as i understand don't 100 percent know another one um <clears throat> the last one for me was one called empire which was mentioned i was chatting to uh bc scrubs who's been following um for years and years and chat to him occasionally um from the other side of the world and he was saying, "Have you read Empire by Mark Wade?" He said, "Like it's yeah, it's that's really another good. one." And I think it was with DC, and then because it was standalone, it went over to Image, I think, for a bit. So he took it to Image, and I think it ended up at IDW. So it's been at a couple of different companies. But um, he was said, he said to me, "Like you have to read Empire. It's so good." But I've never read it. I think it's one of those books. It sounds like they need to release a, a chunker. How many issues is it? I don't know. I'd need to check. It could be about 18 or something. I'm not, I'm not 100%. Hmm. Okay, I have the first six issues in a trade that is in my to-read pile. Like, I'm literally looking at oh. it right now, and I've never gotten around to it. And, I, yeah, again, plenty of stuff to uh, to check out that is part of my recommends, just because you hear about people saying that that's a really good one. Yeah. And it's in my collection. I'm looking for the gentleman and I can't find them. Oh. I'm sorry. Shout out to you. You know who you are. <laughs> Send us a message. Say that's my name, you jerk. Um, but yeah, <laughs> the Brave and the Bold from George Perez and Mark Wade. Really, really nice stuff. 
Uh, let me see what's on my what I haven't mentioned. So we said Daredevil, great pick, Fantastic Four, great pick. It was JV. Uh, JV, we were talking to, and I'm really sorry, JV, but I can't. I'm terrible at oh, pronouncing yeah. names. And you know what's you it's know tan, what's tan hilarious Wack is that Co, I think. Yes, or tan yes. I've been chatting with him since then on my Cable Solitude page. So oh. Shout out, JV. So yeah, I knew it was <laughs> my bad. Oh, so man. many people on the Omniverse coming through that you're chatting with Dave that it's hard to, to keep track, which is a good thing. <laughs> They're very friendly. Oh. Um, Justice League Year One, I did enjoy that series quite a bit. I did. I want to I read did. it again. I want to give it another guy. Yeah, <laughs> it's a uh, it's a nice a nice uh, touchstone of like a JLA uh, origin story that's a little bit different, but also paying homage to the Silver Age in, in interesting ways. Yeah, but uh, I think, wasn't it trying to basically fix the origin for post crisis? Yeah, but pay tribute yeah. to the Silver Age. An- yeah, and and it does so in a pretty respectable way. I felt, which was kind of a hard thing to do with a team like with so much history yeah. and versions and. Yeah, I so I enjoyed that one. Uh, he said Tower of Babel, there a birthright. Oh, I, I have to mention something from from the Flash era. He's he's influenced that character so much. The Wally West, um, Linda Park relationship, Speed Force, Terminal Velocity, the uh, Flash Year One, the Barry Allen Return of Barry Allen storyline. Like some really touchstone moments in that character's. I th- I don't know if there had been anything up to that point that was as important to the Flash mythology as when Mark Wade really took the reins. I think he he really gave that character a lot of road to run. <laughs> pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know if that's a fair assessment. Maybe I'm I'm no, I think blowing it, it out of proportion. It sounds, it but, a fair, I mean he introduced impulse as well and so it wasn't just concepts, it was whole new characters and yeah, he really gave him a family. Yeah. And most people, I think, when they refer to The Flash, a, a lot of the fan base loves Wally, Wally West more than um, Barry... I've got them back to yeah, you're right. Wally West they, more than Barry Allen. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think the the, the, the Barry Allen return is, is very much Jeff John getting to do what he's always wanted to do with the character he loves, because that's his favorite character, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, Mark Wade's. I know. I know we're a little bit different on that aspect, but it's it's fun comics. I I really like the Flash I, stuff. I think I'll like the later stuff. So I'm going to pick it back up again. But I think I will like the later stuff more, partly because Blue Penalty that... is on it. Oh, I haven't read any of the later stuff. I've read big chunks of like the first half. Uh huh. But yeah, I want to get a deep dive into that series. See see if how I really feel about it without all of the hype and the yeah. This is the best, dude. Fly, right? Yeah, yeah. But I got to send a shout out to it because it is—it's an extensive period of time he was on the character, and a lot of good things post his run come out of it because of stuff he put put there. Yeah, completely. Yeah, so yeah. It's a fair point. Nice. This is fun. I look forward to the next. Uh, should we do an artist next? We could do an artist next. If anyone okay. would particularly like us to. Oh, apparently we can skip Wade's Hulk, according to Meat Trunks. <laughs> I didn't I, mind I it. I wasn't a big fan of it either, to be honest, but um, some people really love it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. I didn't mind it, I'll be honest. I have it. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I'm a Mark Wade fan. He's one of my favorite favorite writers. This is true. Who, should we throw a couple of options out there of an artist to, um, to focus in on and then let people decide? Or No, I mean, if people want to suggest one, that's fine. We can bear it in mind. But I think um, we'll decide offline. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. <laughs> Dave, always a pleasure. It was fun. Yeah, and no, I like it. Excellent choices, man. There's stuff in there that I haven't read, so you've given me stuff to take a gander at, so that's always good. Yeah, and I think um, I think both of the our, our five that we picked whatever people choose from there i think they'll they'll be something that they enjoy yeah, for sure definitely so i hope any anybody listening watching they, they they heard something they haven't read yet give it a shot good chance that, that you'll enjoy it yeah even if it's your first comment yeah good job. awesome all right dude thank you everybody for listening don't forget to rate and review the show on uh, spotify apple music or no sorry itunes podcasts all that good stuff 
And keep and an eye out Om- for YouTube as well. That's right. Omniversecomics.guide. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Misha. Shout out to Misha, the producer. All right, everybody. Take care. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye-bye.